My, my colleague Frank Shul Shulman used to tell a story about driving home from church one Sunday morning after he preached what he thought was an absolutely eloquent and beautiful sermon. And this was confirmed by many people walking out of the church who shook his hand and told him that he'd knocked it out of the park that morning. And so in a moment of, of great self-congratulation, which ministers are prone to, uh, as they're driving home, he looks over at his wife in the passenger seat and he says, Honey, how many... Now, how many really good preachers do you think there are in this denomination? She looked back at him and she said, Honey, I don't know, but I know there's one less than you think there are. <laughs> we all need people to keep it real. You know, keep us real. All of us. These are people who, they can offer us their support. They can offer us their guidance when life is tough when we need to hear some tough truths. There are also people who have learned through their own life experience what is needed in order to grow and to heal. These are the ones like the loon in the story who can help us, give us new eyes and new insights when we're blinded by our grief or our troubles. More importantly, these are people who know that our wounds and our weaknesses, they're not things that we need to cover up and that we need to hide. These are our mentors because they know that our wounds and our weaknesses are what complete us. They're what equip us to be able to care for others, which is a blessing. These cracks in our perfection, these cracks in our lives, these cracks in our bodies and our psyches, these breaks and cracks and holes, that's where the light comes through. But if we cover them up, we cover them over, or we're afraid to look at them, then we fail to find the light that we need in order to see again. It's this light that helps us to find our way when we're out wandering through the valley of the shadow of death and despair. It's this light that once we discover it in ourselves, it allows us to be wise mentors and healers and blessed companions to others. It's this light that makes more visible our sacred connection with everyone and everything that exists. One of my favorite writers the, on this subject is Dr. Rachel Naomi Remen. Her grandfather was a rabbi, and he studied the Kabbalah, which is the mystical form of Judaism. And she says that on her fourth birthday, he gave her for a present the story from the Kabbalistic, mystical Jewish tradition of the birthday of the world. She tells it like this. In the beginning, there was only a holy darkness. And at a certain moment, this world, the world of a thousand thousand things, emerged out of the heart of the holy darkness in a great ray of light. And then, probably because this is a Jewish story, there was an accident. <laughs> and the vessels that contained the light of the world broke. And the wholeness of the world was scattered into a thousand, thousand fragments. And they fell into all events and all people, and they remain there to this day. Now, Dr. Remen's rabbi grandfather explained that the whole human race is a response to this accident. We are born with the capacity to find the hidden light in all events and all people, and to lift it up, and to make it visible again, and thereby to restore the innate wholeness of the world. Now in Hebrew, this is called tikkun olam, the restoration of the world. The beauty of this story is that it teaches that every one of us is a healer of this world. But it's not, we often think, oh, it's got to be a big thing I got to do. You know, I have to be somebody great, some giant in order to do it. But that's not what it's about. It's not about making a huge difference. It's about healing the world by caring for that which touches you and for those who are around you. Dr. Remen tells us that 
In this day and age, we all feel like we need to be more, you know, more educated, wealthier, to be uh, different somehow from who we are. But according to this story that the Jewish rabbis tell, we are exactly what's needed in order to heal one another. Exactly what's needed in order to heal one another and our world. Now I can tell you that I spend a lot of time with people who are dying. It's actually a blessing. It's a privilege. And I'm reminded of something each time that Dr. Remen says that the view from the edge of life is clearer. I often find that these people who are coming to the end of their days, they realize that what they're really leaving behind, it's not their possessions, but it's what they've left in the hearts and the minds of the people who they've touched. Our job, your job, and my job is to find the light of God in every situation in every person and lift it out and make it visible. And in doing so, you do your part to restore the world. Now, if you can see what I'm talking about, then you know what you need to do. Go do it.